All right, there we go. Let's try that again. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, baby. What's, up? What's yeah. up, dude? Yeah, I can hear you now. I'm doing great. God, God forbid a hockey guy gets gets involved yeah, in, in I mean, tech, eh? <laughs> seriously. It's supposed to make your life easier, and here we are, like, you know, being difficult, slowing you down. We want to thank our sponsor. This show is brought to you by Bitcoin Trading Cards, an orange pill in a pack, making talking about things that normally make you want to cry fun and easy. The scarcest cards on the entire planet available now. We have an unbelievable guest here today, a true playable character in a sea of non-playable characters, Mr. Corey Secord, the creator of Hodler's Official, an unbelievable, you've probably seen these jerseys uh, all over the place on stage. I know I've seen them repped by people all over the place at conferences and he just came out with a new jersey as well and the backs of the jersey amazing got satoshi on there you can see it the 09 but he's got the 21 basketball jersey this is the baseball jersey just an incredible person one of my favorite people in the space someone that takes his health his fitness very seriously really a true embodiment of the bitcoin ethos of freedom liberty prosperity and capitalism free markets I appreciate Corey coming on here, taking time out of his day, uh, running his business, and, and really the successful business he is running is a true testament to himself and the Bitcoin space as well. He is one of the kindest people I know, and I always, always look forward to, to seeing him and hanging out with him. Wish I could do it more, but looking forward to playing some hockey with him here in the future. Uh, a, a border mate uh, as I'm here in Michigan and he is in Canada. Uh, but I just appreciate Corey coming on the show today. Please enjoy this episode. It's it's a really fun one and he has a lot of cool stories to share and he really has a, an eye for detail and making quality products and increasing Bitcoin adoption everywhere. Mr. Corey Secord, enjoy. Mr. Corey Secord, thank you brother for joining me here today. We got repping your your brand right here uh, and you got the new jerseys on the, the yeah, new ones actually that it dropped so tell me tell me about this a bit and then i want to get into your story i want to get your orange pill story um you see these everywhere i mean like there's people now that have seen these on on all kinds of people on stages whatever um so uh, again first first and foremost thank you brother you're, you're one of my favorite people in the space and uh just such a genuine person uh amazing person so thanks brother appreciate you coming on Dude, likewise. Yeah, no, I'm super happy to be on it. You know, I'm really happy about the opportunity. So, um, but yeah, I mean, for uh, about six months, I've only had the Team Genesis, Team Bitcoin Genesis jerseys, the the black and white baseball jerseys. Um, and I, the three kind of feedback, biggest feedbacks I've been getting from, you know, other Bitcoiners are they want an orange one. They want number 21, obviously. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have been asking for basketball jerseys as well. So, I kind of combined all three of those, you know, big feedback items into, you know, the next product, which was the Satoshi one and the Nakamoto ones. Um, and I decided to kind of name them specifically like that, because um, if you look at like the Jordan basketball shoe collection, like mm -hmm. the, the original uh, Michael Jordan, you know, Nike shoe, like the iconic kind of, um, uh, yeah, first product that they made in their collaboration together was called the Jordan Ones. And so now those are kind of like a super rare, special um, product, obviously, right? It's like a, you know, timeless piece of merchandise uh, and a memento for the basketball community as well. And ever since then, they've been making, you know, you know, you have LeBron Ones and LeBron Threes and you have all these different kind of um, additions that are uh, measured or indicated with like a number right so mm -hmm. i wanted to start these ones off you know especially being orange too um and having the satoshi ones and the nakamoto ones and i mean obviously everything like like the one you're wearing as well like everything's fully embroidered even this even the stripes are stitched on on the basketball jerseys a little bit different with how this works here but yeah ever ever heard of that guy anybody <laughs> <laughs> you know the guy famous yeah. athlete once or twice yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but but yeah i mean um yeah i love bitcoin and i love kind of repping team bitcoin obviously you know you're a sports guy as well uh we were talking a little bit off air of, you know just kind of what sports means to you when you're growing up and all the things that it mm -hmm. gives you in terms of like all the adjacent second order um 
benefits that you get from you know just lacing up skates and going around skating fast and scoring goals and stuff that's all fun but um yeah being part of a community and i mean i think you know the, my slogan is like team bitcoin merchandise for bitcoin's biggest fans right and if you okay. could maybe define what a fan would be it would be somebody that uh in my mind you know is invested in the success of something i guess you know what i mean like if you're a toronto maple leafs fan like i like i right. am for hockey you know like i'm invested in their success i i cheer when they win you know i cry when they lose which is yeah. every every year since 19 <laughs> for a very long time 67 1967 yeah so um <laughs> you're right but, hey, you're right there with the wings when i so i was a kid it was 1955 and then they won in 97 so you know yeah similar it was similar true you got a couple of really good years too couple, um, and then we had a couple of good years for sure yeah and and they're good now too actually uh the fun yeah, to watch they're but getting better stevie's got yeah. it going and Stevie, yeah why? come on <laughs> yeah no he's a genius so yeah. uh everything's working out there but i mean yeah in, ter- in terms of like team bitcoin you know it's something that's totally different too um than crypto for example like really when you're like on team bitcoin i find that the people are specifically trying to be like a super sovereign individual and separate money from state. And there's maybe a couple other things you could, you could define, you know, what a team Bitcoin person would be as well. But those are kind of like the, the major indicators. Um, and I mean, yeah, I went to like, I'm, I'm here in Mexico in Tulum and there's, you know, a crypto meetup that they have once a week. Uh, it's at this really beautiful location that they have. I don't know if you know what a cenote is, but it's essentially these like oh. cave, like natural water. It's almost like a small lake pond thing, but it's like mm. in a cave. It's hard, it's hard to describe. Uh, the ancient Mayan people that, um, you know, were, I guess, native to Mexico um, would, yeah, do all these different, like, you know, they would do like, uh, they would like do sacrifices in them and stuff. Uh, wow. there's, yeah so there's some interesting history i don't i don't want to go wild. too into it because yeah i don't want to i don't want to mess up any of the details but yeah there's there's some real kind of interesting significance around these kind of areas anyways um yeah i was at, I was at a, a crypto event um last week just to check it out for the first time and everybody there you know like i don't no offense to anybody that's there it's not i'm not chirping them i'm just saying like they're just we're doing two totally different things. Like, like I was saying, like with Bitcoin, like I'm trying to be like a super sovereign individual and, you know, on a, on a macro level, contribute to something that is separating money from state. Whereas like everybody that's in crypto is like literally just trying to make a trade. Like they're just trying to find out what's the next hottest thing so they can buy it now and sell it next month or in two months. You know what I mean? Um, and I remember, you know, during COVID as well, like, the majority of the people that I found to resonate with in those very tough times were Bitcoiners. You know, I think that there's gotta be like, I think the the Bitcoin community is probably, I don't want to get your podcast flag, but I, you know, I think they've <laughs> got to be the, the, the least, the least jab that of, you know, any other kind of community or social demographic or, you know, stuff like that. Yep. Um, and that all just goes with like, you know, really trying to be a sovereign individual and um, trying to make your own decisions and take responsibility for your own life. And I just like that aspect um, about the people that are in Bitcoin. That's, you know, that's why we have a good friendship. That's why, mm-hmm. you know, whenever we go to conferences, it's so easy to talk to anybody, you know, like I love going to Bitcoin conferences because mm, yeah, especially, especially back in like, if you think about the, how it was in 2021, 2022, like, yeah it's very difficult to just be in a space where you can like freely speak your mind and like freely just like talk about whatever is truly your opinion on something. Right. Um, and even it, like, a, it's not like every single Bitcoin has the same kind of political philosophy or anything like that. Right. Um, it's just that like people are open-minded to. Hey, really quick. I want to annoy the hell out of you with a quick little break to just remind you that we have to share the signal within the noise because the algorithm hate truth. 
algorithm hates truth. So we have to do all that we can to spread the signal. The faster we do that, the quicker change comes to the world. We need to be the change we seek to be. What are we doing? What am I doing? What are you doing to build a future? Also, if you want a written version of a lot of what we do here, please go to the description and find the link to our, our blog, our Substack, as well as you will see many links to the either the work or the companies the places you can find all the playable characters here that we talk to and how you can connect with them so now back to the show thank you i mean just general freedom around like freedom of what you want to do with your body freedom of choice freedom of yep. you know keeping your money away from the government um yep. And so, yeah, I feel like there's, yeah, just a really interesting community of people that are all kind of on the, um, under the umbrella of Team Bitcoin. I think we're doing something really special for the world. I mean, you know, I'm just making merch out here, but there's a lot of people that are building some incredible tech that is going to change life forever. And that literally is changing life forever right now. So it was yeah. kind of random. No, no, it's perfect. And again, it, you know, Corey's business is Hollers official. So that's, I should have said that earlier. Um, but uh, I know a lot of people have seen these, but for those who haven't, um, and, you know, we'll, we'll tag, uh, you know, link stuff you know, below as well. So people can see it uh, as well and go to it. But yeah, I mean, you, you nailed it too with like the, the crypto stuff and, you know, everything I see too, like whether it's uh, know, famous figures or, you know, people in the media or, or people that I know, like people that are just like down the street, uh, normal plebs or whatever, they they always talk they they don't even know it a lot of times but they're talking like bitcoin versus crypto you know crypto versus versus bitcoin they lump them in there a lot of times together but i just like i saw a guy like a youtube thing uh leo trades or something he's got like almost six hundred thousand youtube subscribers never heard of him or seen him in my life but today mm -hmm. i was watching nolan bowerlay's uh you know his show he does 8 a.m every day um, you know bitcoin and, and current events basically right and just suggested it's like you know 10 videos down but suggested i'm like what is this and of course got the great thumbnails and stuff like that and i was like you can kind of tell it's a crypto thing but i was like oh, okay it's interesting i want to see like why why is it still this stuff being promoted still unprompted and again it's the same he's just talking about you know what cryptos are going to pump and like it's not just about the tech you got to see like what has the attention and stuff like that and so you nailed it like bitcoiners have this ethos of of truth objective truth and, and fighting for that and, and and building community where the crypto is just the complete you know fiat being remade in this system that's it's just a new version of what we're dealing with now an updated version of this fiat system legacy monetary system that's you know debt based and not working for anyone except the one thousandth of one percent of the top so um, anyway that's that I just wanted some context for that for the viewer because that's you you just nailed it where so the jerseys what where are you making them and how are you making them are they in canada they're being made in, in us and in, in mexico down there like where are the jerseys being made and, and how are you how are you making them are they are they on demand like they they printed on demand in a sense i know they're stitched they're they're really high quality which are always the jerseys i love wearing when playing hockey growing up and i got was very fortunate to have a lot of different teams i was on they were always like stitched and just like beautiful jerseys instead of like the, the printed stuff that you see but uh do you have to carry inventory like how does that all come together and how does it work yeah so everything is fully embroidered so i i also don't like the you know the whole sublimated look um you know i'm, I'm very picky as to how they come out i'm really really happy with how both of these jerseys that both of us are wearing turned yeah, out beautiful um yeah yeah thank you man and because you know, I had to go to a bunch of different suppliers to, to find the right one. Yeah, no, I, yep. you know, I'm, I'm super comfortable in all of them as well. And I, I want people to be able to touch them and be like, wow, this is like actually really high quality stuff. Like this is a fully authentic Jersey. Right. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like you said, we're trying to make team Bitcoin merchandise for, for Bitcoin's biggest fans. Um, right now they're currently made in, in China and, you know, I have a relationship with these mm -hmm. guys that I've been working since I was testing suppliers back in, in may um and consistently they've been high quality and um you know like they're they're actually they're actually pretty good um but i'm trying to right now work out a solution where i can get a, a canadian manufacturer to make them almost as they come in like there's there's a bad wrap around like the word drop shipping but mm -hmm. it's really just like a fulfillment model and i think right. that I think it, I think that the drop shipping word uh, is tainted by a bunch of people using that model to sell crap. 
it's a drop shipping gang that then like left and went to crypto right it's like this, this, <laughs> yeah they keep like every couple of years they go to like this new trendy thing they're trying to exploit yeah it's it's a similar mentality for sure yes but i'm i like you know specifically like without putting labels on it i'm trying to figure out a way that i can have them manufactured in canada or the us i would be open to mexico as well um and have them you know so i so that I could make a super small, maybe 21 item collection or 121 item collection. And, you know, the orders come in and then they're, they're made within like seven days or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can ship them out because otherwise I do have to hold a lot of inventory and um, dealing with warehousing and shipping has been like the biggest struggle of the entire mm -hmm. business. I think anybody that, as a product-based business this is my first ever um but i'm i'm yep. assuming that a lot of people would agree that shipping is uh brutal <laughs> it's like just one of the worst parts about having a product-based based business at all so um anyways yeah trying to find like kind of creative solutions to get people the products quicker but but not sacrificing even one percent of quality maybe even making the quality better um and so if anybody has any connections to any manufacturers in Canada or the U S uh, I would be super open to talking to them. The biggest problem that I've found is, is that, you know, there's, there's a quite a few Canadian and American manufacturers, but they'll buy all the bases um, from China and then they'll just like stitch them on in the U S. So it's difficult to say like made in the U S or made in Canada, if the components were coming from China, I mean, I don't really exactly yeah. know how that would work in terms of, in terms of labeling, but you know, you could say like the base is bought from China or Pakistan or wherever and Americans or Canadians stitch them on. I don't know. That's like three, four times the price just to like almost virtue signal. It sounds like. Um, mm -hmm. So anyways, I'm, I'm trying to work out. I'm tr always trying yeah. to make. Um, yeah, I'm always trying to improve. So if anybody has any suggestions, I'm super open to that. If anybody has any connections with any manufacturers that they think would be good fits. Um, definitely throw those in the comments or send me a DM. Yeah. Beautiful. What, uh, so right now walk me through the products that are available now. And then you know, if you're, if you're not opposed to it, maybe stuff you're thinking in the future, I know these, these just dropped the basketball jerseys, but what are your, some of your thoughts on, uh, moving forward? Yeah. I mean, like I was saying, I had the baseball jerseys. Um, and that was like my, my only product for a long time. And I realized that like, you know, again, I've never had a product-based business, but you get, you have to put out more products more consistently and frequently than that. So I'm hoping to come out with just smaller, smaller batches. Uh, like for example, the basketball jerseys, I did just 121 of each. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if anybody's going to understand, you know, yep. scarcity, scarcity. Yeah. then it's Bitcoiners, right? So, um, so I'm going to try and do more of those. I, I want to touch on like every sport as well. Um, put out some in different colors, like, you know, have basketball jerseys in different colors as well. A lot of people have been asking for hats as well. Um, I'm going to try and keep everything fully embroidered. Even if I was to do like t-shirts or hoodies or something in the future, um, I'd like those to be embroidered as well. I just like the way embroidery turns out. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of like a niche thing. Like everybody, there's, there's a lot of Bitcoin merch companies. Um, a lot of them are just doing um you know print on demand for t-shirts and hoodies and stuff and like, like that's fine like that's that's great um i just want to do something just a little bit different that's all you know yeah yeah and and i know like that's something i know you've talked to with aladdin about with bitcoin trading cards and um i know because he's got experience i think he owned a, a clothing store and stuff like that years ago um so yeah, i know you guys have kind of collaborated talked a little bit about that but just kind of quality which is you know kind of coming full circle it's the the bitcoin ethos right um you know trying to stay true to scarcity in a way um you know and quality and putting out quality products and instead of just trying to like shoot things off the line so i think that's a really a really cool way to to continue doing things and kind of iterating different and, and then you can put out more products, but then they're scarcer, uh, which, which gives people that like, Ooh, you know, instead of just like, ah, there's, you know, a hundred thousand of them, like whatever. So it's very, very cool. Um, and just to touch on that, actually, yeah. Aladdin, Aladdin was the, was the guy that told me like, Hey, that's the direction you should go. So shout out to Aladdin. Uh, that was, you know, I had my first conversation with him at Bitcoin Miami uh same with you actually yep. and 
yeah, that's, that was his advice. And, um, I was thinking of going with like bigger collections, um, and doing them slower. Right. But he was telling me like, no, it should actually be the opposite. And at the time I was like, ah, I'm still going to do what I'm, I'm thinking. But as you know, as I progressed through the journey, I kept remembering that conversation and I was like, oh, this guy's right. <laughs> so that's the direction I think they were going to go in the, in the future. So shout out to Asian Aladdin. wisdom. Yeah, yeah exactly. Think- you just got to have experience. So you, you do. And I think that's, that's a one thing. That's the one thing like I can't I can't stand the I was telling David Foley this was I was talking to him the other day and I was telling him like I can't stand the okay boomer thing, which is it's not that's not uh, mutually exclusive to the to the Bitcoin community by any means. That's like this millennial Gen Z thing where it's like, okay, boomer. And, you know, like I get it. I get what people say it. I get why the older generations are like, yeah, hey, you guys are lazy. Like it's just the natural like divide between ages, which is common. Like that's human nature and it's always going to kind of be there. But like it's to me, it's like a derogatory term just because it's like we're discounting like in society, we have lost all like wisdom, you know, just everything, you know. And yeah, of course, old, older generations did things or set things up or whatever, voted people in for decades that benefited them or whatever it is, you know, like it, it gave us the world we're in. Like, yeah, of course, like that's 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 what it is. But we've lost all ability to like take advice and wisdom. Um, from those older generations and you look at um, like Larry Lapard or Dar- David Foley or uh, you know Greg Foss or like some of these guys that you look at Bob Burnett and you look at them and you're like man like they are so smart and I think about guys that can literally be entrenched like one way like for their whole life that's all they knew was the legacy debt-based system and and then they became you know gold gold bugs or whatever and seeing like man there's problems and then being able to switch again and say wow no Bitcoin is the answer, actually. Like those people to me are some of the smartest people out there. Like the genius you have to be able to have to be entrenched for that long and then be able to change your mind and say, you know, wow, like, and it, it just blows me away. So anyway, we've, I, I can't stand people say that because like you're missing the forest from the trees when you, when you say stuff like that. So anyway, not to, you can touch on that if you want. I didn't mean to sidetrack it, but I think it's, it's very important. The wisdom thing, learning from like, like you said, Aladdin, who's had many different businesses before and, you know, being able to be coachable, talking about hockey and, you know, the thing, the sports we played like that growing up, you have to be coachable and, and be able to have a coach um, and, and be able to learn from some people that are, have been where you want to be super important. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think the only thing I'll say on that is like with the OK Boomer stuff, I saw a quote yesterday. Uh, it was uh, your intelligence is measured by your ability to change something along those lines. And, you know, for somebody who didn't grow up with cell phones or video games or any of this kind of technology really ingrained in their life, social media, stuff like that, like I'm most impressed by the boomers that like really understand Bitcoin. Yes. You know what me I mean? Too. Because yep. like, the, the, like, I don't know, those are, yeah, truly like the smartest people. 100%. In, in, because to have lived so long through like this fiat system and not like, like Bitcoin is like a totally radical idea. Like, you know, it, it could, obviously it's easier for younger people to understand. Uh, and I've said this before, I feel like a lot of Bitcoin understanding is actually unlearning a lot of the yes. other things that you've learned. Right. So if you're, if you're a boomer, like think about, all of the nonsense <laughs> that is like you, you know, <laughs> that you've been your foundation for yeah your foundation for how you think economics works um yeah. or or history or whatever right or the or like yeah understanding how the government works um and then to be able to you know a lot of this is like self teaching yourself too right so to be able to be a self-taught boomer i think is the highest honor so Dude. go boomers i love it i love you said that and that's why you and I get along so well. <laughs> and Robert Kiyosaki always says, he's like, you know, I, you're a smart person. If, if you believe what I believe, you're a smart person. You know, yeah. it's like, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but it's like, you're, I know you're an intelligent person because you, you agree with what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, I just, I love that. And it's, it is like, you, you have to, we just lost that respect. But anyway, it is like, uh, it makes me think of Elvin Toffler's book, Future Shock. I think it was from like 1970. And in there, he did basically, again, kind of paraphrasing said that the, the the most successful people in the future will be the people that can learn, unlearn, and then relearn. And it's a huge sign of intelligence and genius really uh, to be able to do that. So I just, yeah, look at those people that are above us and just be like, wow, dude, that's crazy. Like I look at even my, my parents um, who are those ages as well, stuff like that. And they're, they're into Bitcoin. You know, they're not as, 
you know, have time to be as, as far down the road as we are necessarily, right? Or like in the space, you know, gung ho or, you know, going to conference stuff like that. But, um, you know, like they get it. You know, I'm looking at those people, like mentors of mine and people I look up to. It's like, dang, like that's wild. Like you're, like you said, you're kind of like erasing all these things, not erasing it, but like you're having to see everything you learned for 60 years, 65 years, 70 years. And then just be like, ah, oh, no, I think that's wrong. Absolutely. Wild. I can't imagine. I can't imagine having to truly do that. So very crazy. Um, what, I want to transition a little bit because we've been going for a little bit and we, I usually try to start with the story and we've been, of course, we, you know, you and I are going all off, going to a million different places. What, what is your orange pill story? Cause I think this is super important for people to see like the epiphany you had with Bitcoin and see that because that, that to me is where people really in a marketing sense or sales, like you're trying to get people to have that epiphany you had and then shift their context because like us talking about like decentralization or, or hats or jerseys or things like that, 21 million, all these like different things are like facts about the space, the logic. No one really cares, you know, like that. I don't care, Brandon. I don't care, Corey. Uh, but if you can get them to move them emotionally, that's huge. And our stories, our origin stories, our epiphany story, when we had the epiphany is such a huge way because people relate to their life and say, oh, wow, like I had that happen to me too. Like, so what was your, what was your story? Like, how did you get into Bitcoin, like getting into money growing up? Uh, what was that like? Yeah. So uh, I've always been interested in finance. Like I went to school for business. Um and I mean, you know, long story short, found out about Bitcoin in 2017. Uh, I'd heard about it before then, like in high school, but was just too dumb to do anything about it, obviously. <laughs> and like, like 20, all... yeah, right, right. So uh, in 2017, I bought a little bit. I was obviously buying like some other crypto stuff too. Yep. And I was just, I was just being, you know, an, like in, in, yeah, being yes. an, an investor, you know what I yes. mean? And, yep. uh, I remember my Bitcoin be like 4X or something like that. And I would always be showing my roommates and, you know, showing girls and be like, yeah, this stuff yep. just, I don't know. It just comes easy to me. It's just, <laughs> uh, but anyways, later down the line, uh, you know, COVID happens and, you know, you really just start like examining, you know, the moves of, of, of the government and just being ap very apprehensive overall. But I would say like the, the, what really turned me into like a Bitcoin maximalist, maximalist, like a real, like really kind of radicalized me was, was honestly, COVID in Canada and the peak of that and like the peak realization was the freedom convoy. I know a lot of people say that, but you know, going through COVID in Canada was like legit hell. Uh, it was brutal. And uh, the freedom convoy came just like almost at like the perfect time. Like I think tensions were really starting to boil over around the world but especially in canada because i mean it's so cold in canada too like yeah that time of year to... february 2022 if people don't remember yeah yeah and if you're not if you're not allowed to go into some stores you're not allowed to go to the bar you're not allowed to get on a plane you're not like you if, if you were a parent of a kid you couldn't even go in and tie your kid skates you can't watch your kid wow. play hockey if you were a kid you can't even play hockey in canada you know Jeez. and if you did, if you didn't take the jab and so it was it was crazy times people were not happy and so i went to the freedom convoy i went to two other big protests as well because i was like really trying to end this whole thing um and so i went to the freedom convoy and this is like really the orange pill part um and i remember getting home and like i was going up to like a bunch of police officers and stuff and just being like hey boys like catch any bad guys today and they're like ah no actually it's really safe everybody's being really well behaved and i'm like oh whoa okay well have a you don't day. Say. Yeah. yeah exactly i was being like sarcastic like nothing yeah. illegal nothing rude by any means like literally you know the the whole vibe of the of the freedom convoy for people that weren't there or, uh you know just would like to know more about it like it was almost like sarcastically nice um mm. where like everybody's just going around giving people hugs giving like handing out food i had to go to Let's, like to go get some snacks just because I felt so bad because I was getting so many different snacks and hugs and all these different things from all these other people. And I didn't have anything else to give out, but it was just like this really sarcastically nice, like really truly like the most Canadian thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, anyways, I get home from the freedom convoy and I see, you know, Christian Freeland Trudeau, um, the chief of police of Ottawa Freeland. coming out. Yeah. Oh, the worst. Jeez. And, uh, and they're, they're just, saying like really aggressive things like yeah we're going to 
crack down super hard on all the protesters. We're going to freeze all their bank accounts, all these awful things. Um, and it was at, at that moment, I literally remember where I was like, you know, I just remember staring at these headlines and I was just like, fuck, I'm on like seven different police officers, body cams, just going up to them, asking them if they catch any bad guys or whatever. Like mm. I'm for sure going to get my bank account frozen. Like, you know, I'm on, I'm definitely on camera somewhere or whatever. Uh, and that was the moment, like literally where I was like, before this, I'd always thought like, oh yeah, Bitcoin, like obviously would be great for people in Venezuela, you know, Zimbabwe, Argentina, Lebanon, like all these places where your government is collapsing in real time and you're, you don't have any type of currency that works. Um, and that was the first time where I was just like, oh fuck, like I need Bitcoin to protect myself against my government all of a sudden you know what i mean and in canada i just didn't think that that would be in 2022 um but that was the point where i, I stopped seeing bitcoin as like a number go up thing and like more mm -hmm. of just like a freedom technology and i always knew it was a freedom technology but like i guess just having the urgency to really act on it and like you know put your uh put like a lot of your focus behind it and just really realizing like okay this is maybe the only weapon that we have against big government. Right. And like I was saying, you know, Bitcoiners are I in my, in my mind, if I could sum it up, just trying to separate money from state and be a sovereign individual. And, you know, at that moment when you have the threat of your government freezing your bank account or taking away your personal property or, or whatever could have come um, from that decision, if it had gone the, the other way, um, yeah, it just puts it into perspective. Like it's not about money. It's not about, number go up like you know i just really want to truly be a sovereign individual and this is the only thing that's going to be able to give me that you know it's, it's a really incredible it, what's wild is i'm I'm a, I'm a bit older than you i'm 36 and i so i grew up i was a senior at michigan state when the crash happened 0809 and so and i've been very political before that I know we've talked about this a little bit before, but I was very political and I was a history buff and like had studied a lot of history, you know, whether it was the communist manifesto, which, you know, ironically I have right here. Um, <laughs> great book. <laughs> yeah. Great book. And, uh, but you have to know your enemy. Right. And I, again, we've completely lost that. There's, I mean, you have to kind of wonder like, why aren't we taught any of these things in school anymore? Why aren't we taught the, the American constitution? Why are, why aren't people all around the world lear learning that it's not just an American thing. That's a human thing. Um, and uh, America lucked out to uh, the confluence of events where like that happened here, you know, and it's like, why aren't all people learning that? And why aren't all people learning this? Like you got to learn the other side of the spectrum too. And we've just completely lost all of that. Um, I don't even know if the military academies teach us anymore in America and they used to. Um, so, you know, like I saw the pat, I think Bitcoiners are great pattern recognition, uh, experts, you know, in, in a sense where we can see things coming like to me 15, 20 years ago, like it was just like, dude, this is as a young kid or 20 or 20 year old, I was just like, dude, this is crazy. Like we're, we're going off the deep end and you can see it a long time ago, but like you said, you're a little bit younger than I am where you're all of a sudden you just had that, that switch, that epiphany. Uh, Cause I've always wondered like, man, how do people see these things? I've always had a, you know, a time where or people, when I'm talking to people, you know, you say things to people and they're like, they don't even have a reference for what you're saying. Like, what do you mean thirties Germany? Or like, what is that? You know, like all, you know, it's like, but you had it right away. My landing the plane here. What do you like? What do you wish people knew about living through? Because I think like Trudeau orange pilled maybe more people than any other event in history so far. Like, do you think? Like, what do you think? Or what do you wish people knew about that situation? Uh, that maybe they it's hard to kind of convey, or you know, they if they weren't there in person, they might not understand necessarily. Um, and and do you think it's going to be something that can we educate our way out of this, or do you think it's going to be more bad things happening uh, that really orange pill people and um, I have my thoughts, but I would love to get yours on this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Justin Trudeau may be one of the greatest Bitcoiners of all time. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yep. and I mean, to go down that specifically that rabbit hole of the Canadian side, there's, there's a group of guys in Canada. I don't know if you have heard of like the accelerationist theory, acceleration yes. theory, stuff like that. Right. So, uh, that's yep. huge. In, that's huge in Canada. They love Trudeau. Like, the, the, yes. <laughs> the accelerationist. And there's the, there's um, the Fetterman Biden contingent here too. That like, love that. It's like, yeah, bring it on. Let's go. Oh, really? I didn't know there was an American one. That's hilarious. That's honestly, what's it called? 
Well, it's the same thing. It's just, I think it's just accelerationism. That's just oh, okay. like kind of the movement in general. Yeah, but I think it did. I think it, it kind of emanated there, though. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think so. Just with Trudeau. But <clears throat> yep. I, I, I do honestly think that, I mean, just from talking to lots of smart people um, about Bitcoin, that like there's there's tons of smart people that I'll talk to and they just don't have it, any clue about Bitcoin. You know what I mean? And they still think it's just like a number go up thing. And I mean, even going back to the story of what like truly orange pilled me from like this perspective of like, okay, this is not, we're not talking about like the apex predator of, of assets anymore. Like we're talking about like freedom technology, you know what I mean? Like something that can separate money from state and like make you a sovereign individual. Um, unfortunately, I think, you know, and this is just my opinion as of now that I think people have to go through those tough experiences, you know, like coming home, yeah. looking at your laptop and being like, oh. The government I was is afraid you're going to say that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, like going on the, on the computer, be like, oh, okay. The government is going to freeze my bank account today. That's mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> like, that's, that's wild. That's pretty cool. Didn't have that yeah. my bingo card. Yeah. No, it's like, that's, yeah. So I think you're going to have to go through something like that mm -hmm. um, to really get it. You know, um, like, I, I, th I think that Bitcoin is just such a, a differentiated idea that like people don't really like there's nothing really you can compare it to um yep. like it's it's not like you know like like i was saying it's not like even crypto itself like it's you know it's not like stocks it's not and and i don't think that people even i don't even think people can think about a way out rather than you know building a bunker and getting a whole bunch of land and getting some guns and you know like really trying to move off the grid and Obviously, that's important as well if you want to be a sovereign individual. But I think it's just going to take tough things happening in the world and being like, hey, this is uh, the only solution that we have, this Bitcoin thing. You know, what do you think about it now? What do you think about it now? What do you think about it now? And eventually, people are going to be like, okay, I understand how this solves a problem. And unfortunately, they're going to be like, okay, I understand how this solves a problem that I'm having right now, you know? Um, like, I think it would be a lot easier to, our, to orange pill somebody in Argentina rather than, you know, your average student going to a U.S. university or something, right? Um, 100%. So, unfortunately, yeah, I think that is just what it is. And I, I don't know if I would necessarily say I'm an accelerationist, but I, I do accept that that is just a way that people learn in general. Like, people learn through pain, right? Um, and whether you like it or not, it, you know, more pain will come. Obviously the fiat system is, is falling apart. And, uh, so people will be more and more learning these lessons. So <laughs> the, the fiat system is designed for pain and, and the, the fiat legacy debt-based monetary system is designed for maximum pain for the 99%. I had my little, my seven-year-old ask me yesterday, uh, like, why, what's this saying? Like, why is pain a good teacher? <laughs> And it's just like, I don't know, humans, like, for some reason, we don't, we don't have to, like, when you get into the ephemeral, like the invisible, like, it's hard for us to, like, comprehend. But like, when we the, in the physical, we, we get that we have to look across the road, and not get hit by a car, we, we can learn from like someone else doing something stupid. And like, oh, well, I'm not gonna do that. But when it gets to like this, this ephemeral world, I don't know, I don't know what it is. Like, we just have this cognitive dissonance between like, you know, oh, I guess I can do it too. I can do communism better this time or, or whatever. And it's like, what? I, I just, I don't know, it's really weird. Do you have people around you that are more interested in Bitcoin? Because even now, like even the number go up a little bit, uh, Bitcoin up 150%, you know, since uh, what, a year ago, uh, basically. <laughs> it's crazy because I thought more people, I guess, naively like, oh, wow, like, wow, you guys back from the dead for the 500th time. Like, wow, like maybe this is real. I'm stunned at the amount of people around me that still aren't there. I see people a little more interested, but they're still like, oh, 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 you know, what do you see with people around you um, in the interest level? Because I think pain is really, unfortunately, the greatest teacher. You want to minimize collateral damage. That's why we do what we do. It's why we're making products. That's why we're making content, like all these different things to minimize this collateral damage. But unfortunately, I think you are spot on. There's going to have to be more pain. What do you see with people around you, though, like right now? Or like the last month or two are people waking up around you more are they asking more questions to you about bitcoin like how do what is, what's look, look like in your world i mean you know i spent the last year going to a whole bunch of bitcoin conferences and then i am in mexico now so i mean maybe it's not a good uh anecdote as to like you know the people that are around me because again a lot mm -hmm. of them are bitcoiners so a lot of these people already get skewed. it yeah, yeah it's definitely it's definitely skewed but i mean in general i guess um you know, uh, I like to hang around 
people who are smart people, I guess. And there's still a lot of people who are really smart, I think, that just have no idea about Bitcoin and they just haven't really gone down the rabbit hole, not even like a little bit. Even people that work in finance that I know, they just don't have a clue about Bitcoin at all. And again, I think it's just this, I think it's just totally different. Um, and it's just difficult to wrap your head around and, and people need a reason to care about it. And again, I mean, unfortunately, I think the reasons to care about it will come from a, you know, a negative event happening in their life where the government tries to steal their money or shut their bank accounts down or whatever the next PSYOP is. Um, I mean, the, I guess the the interesting anecdote is like, you know, like I was saying, I went to this this crypto thing that was happening in, in, in the town um, in Tulum. And even the people that are like in crypto don't get Bitcoin. You know what I mean? And so right. even if even if like people are like so close and they still don't get it. So like, how would you really be able to expect, you know, people who don't study finance or don't aren't into technology at all? Like, how would you expect those people to really understand? I think I still think we're quite a ways away. I still think that we're so early um, as well. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's a blessing as well. Um, you can stack more. You can really make friends with people who are like truly in, in it for like the ethos. Um, rather than a whole bunch of people coming for a num number go up type of type of mentality. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because, you know, everybody was making fun of me because I was a Bitcoin maximalist at this crypto thing. And like, I don't care. It's, it is what it is. Um, and I think that all of those people as well are just going to have to learn through pain. Like they're going to get destroyed in this, you know, bull market or whatever happens like this alt season that they think is going to come. I think the returns are going to be diminished significantly from like compared to the last bull run in 2021 uh and i think these people are going to get just destroyed and they're going to come to the realization that it's just like man if i had if i use the money that i put into floki inu in this cycle <laughs> you know or whatever mm -hmm. these dog tokens that they're trading or these nfts or whatever if i just took that money and i just put it into bitcoin I would be in such a much better financial position than I am today. Cause I, I went through that part of the pain too, mm. you know? And it's just like looking back, like, okay, if I wasn't gambling and being a degenerate, like I would have so much more Bitcoin. And my goal was to just like, you know, accumulate as much Bitcoin as possible anyways, but it was, you know, but trying to time the market, right? Like that was that's, doing it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. Yep. exactly. So, so and I yeah. think, I think people are going to just have to go through that too. So. Yeah, and that's that, it's a great point. And, and kind of wrapping that part of it of it up, I know you have 15 minutes there. What that is, you have to go through the gauntlet, and that's that's something that I I always like saying to people because like you get people that are snippy about it or or whatever, and it's like Bitcoiners had to go through the gauntlet. It's not like we just woke up one day and you're like you're just airdropped Bitcoin, and you're like, oh, I'm a Bitcoiner now. Like I'm amazing. I'm I'm so smart. It's like no, you you have to go through the gauntlet to become a Bitcoiner. It's like going to if you want to be a Navy SEAL, you got to go through buds. You got to go through Hell Week. You got to go through oh, six months of buds, and you got to get through the gauntlet. You have to you to be forged in that fire of pain. Uh, quite honestly, so it's you know the answer kind of lies within itself. So that's I, I like to tell people that like, hey, I I was in the political stuff, then I was in gold and silver, then I bought uh, Bitcoin, and and I bought fortunately more Bitcoin than I did like the. 30 other, you know, shit coins that I bought. Um, and I was, you know, position size, like, use, like, same thing. Like, I'm an investor. Like, I understood the investing side because of my real estate background. I'm like, oh, I'm going to, like, position size and I'll, you know, whatever. And then eventually, I was just like, over the last five years, I I converted them all to Bitcoin. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, 2020 happened. And you're like, what what is going on? Like, this this is the last, this is the final game. This isn't, like, some, like, joke. Like, oh, we need more fiat. So, anyway, wait, really quick, though, what who's who's the bigger uh, WEF puppet, Freeland or Trudeau? <laughs> <laughs> oh I my god earlier, i forgot no that's a good question oh, man. man i mean <laughs> i would more rhetorical <laughs> yeah i mean I, I don't know i would have to say oh. true though because um uh, they're they're both they're just both bad man absolute cancers to society but <laughs> oh <my laughs> dude yeah oh boy they're both terrible so in in saying that, I know it, we had. Give me some of your thoughts on Bitcoin trading cards. Uh, the, you know the show now. We you know I I help do the marketing for that, and um, you know we're the, the pre presented. The show is presented by Bitcoin trading cards, so I touch on it in every show. What give me thoughts on that? Uh, maybe possible collaboration here in the future. I know we talked about it offline a little bit, but we'll uh, we'll say that here. 
um, in, in the recording for sure that, uh, you know, look, be on the lookout people for uh, maybe some Hodler's official and uh, Bitcoin trading cards collaboration in the future. But uh, give me some thoughts. I know we talked about Aladdin earlier, but give me some thoughts on it. Yeah, man. And yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed by Bitcoin trading cards. It seems like it's taken the Bitcoin community by storm, which is... It's, it's so interesting because, I mean, I, I used to be a Pokemon and, and Yu-Gi-Oh guy, like, you know, when I was a kid and I used to just love the cards, you know? Um, and so when you see the Bitcoin trading cards and they're like actually really like ultra high quality, you know what I mean? Um, and it's, it's, it's very similar to like, you know, I've had comments where people are wearing the jersey and they wear it out and a whole bunch of people are asking them about Bitcoin and it kind of orange pills. Mm -hmm. people kind of randomly and spontaneously uh and in a, in a totally organic way and I, I think bitcoin trading cards is doing you know pretty much the exact same thing even on even on a bigger scale um and i mean i love the team i love aladdin like i was saying i mean he's given me a lot of advice just on how to grow my brand from you know from all of his learning experiences um it seems like there's a huge community not only of like pack stackers, but like there's like, for example, you're involved with it. There's, I've met tons of other people that are like involved in like, you know, the actual company and the brand. Um, so it's cool to just see like a whole bunch of Bitcoiners kind of like driving the bus of, of this project. Um, and overall, yeah, I, I just think it's, it's, it's inspiring for myself being, you know, a Bitcoin business. And yeah, I think that, I think that what you guys are doing is, is really interesting. I think these these cards are going to be, you know, special mementos for this era of Bitcoin that we're in. Um, you know, 2023 Bitcoin, like I was saying, it's such a small community still. Mm -hmm. Um that I think, you know, looking back on having these cards in five, 10 years, especially like some of some of the OG packs, um, I think it's gonna be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And that's a looking forward to doing stuff with you going forward. And the other thing, like that's the cool thing about Bitcoin that people just don't understand yet. Like the power of network, like a network effect. That's why Bitcoin or um sorry, like Facebook, Instagram, all those networks are so powerful because they have network effect. The more people that are on the network and using it, the more powerful it is. Like if if it, if you and I just had a cell phone and that was it, the only people in the world, like the cell phone really wouldn't be worth very much because like all we can do is like call each other. But that's what's so powerful about Bitcoin. It aligns all these incentives because it captures deflation. But like, I want to help your business. Like, you want to help Bitcoin trading cards. Like, I, you like we want miners to succeed. You know, like all the miners are like they're competitive, but they also like help each other all the time. You know, like, they're always helping each other, and that's the thing that Bitcoin does. It makes you. We're all incentivized for Bitcoin to get out there, be adopted, and grow the network. No matter who you are, a content creator, uh, you know, offering a product or a service, whatever it is. That's the coolest part. And I think that's where people from the fiat world, you don't get that. Like you go to a business conference and it's kind of like every man for himself, you know, you're all competing. There's no really like helping other people, other businesses, There's no need because you're competing with them. You know, like you don't have like this, this neutral money that you're all using and you all hold that, that continually goes up in value and preser preserves your purchasing power. So such a cool thing. And I, 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 that's what I wish for people to be able to see that going forward. Um, what does your reading list look like? You know, YouTube videos. What do you? What does Corey do to stay informed, stay up to date, and, and stay plugged into Bitcoin and, and and the latest happenings? Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I listen to the Canadian Bitcoin podcast quite a lot. Um, I think it's great. Shout out to those guys. I think they do a great job uh, every single week, and it's a great just kind of like wrap up of all the hot events that happened in in Bitcoin. And then they also do like clown world segments so that you get a little bit of like world news events and a lot of a lot of Canadian news. And I'm not in Canada right now, so it's nice to kind of just like hear about what's going on yeah. and, and stay in touch. Um, I mean, honestly, been getting lost in a ton of uh, Twitter doom scrolling as of recently. Um, I love Dylan Leclerc stuff. Shout out to him. I think that he's mm -hmm. just like incredibly smart. Um it's not necessarily like a book from a reading list or anything like that, but that's, uh, yeah, I think that he has just some of the most outstanding content in the space. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for more books to read as well. Um, in Mexico, I mean, I don't know a lot of YouTube as well. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I've, I've been taking a little bit of, a little bit of a break from, you know, really kind of, listening to Bitcoin podcasts every single day. 
Um, I think that's great. Some like I love uh, getting into those grooves where you're just downloading a whole bunch of information, but mm -hmm. I'm just trying to also take, take a bit of a step back just as of recently. And um, yeah, just Smart. kind of build, yeah. Like build more knowledge base on like um, more personal stuff, I guess. Um, and, oh, Bob and Proctor. He's a Toronto guy. Bob Proctor. Yeah. I, I, yeah, oh, I know, man. I know Bob Proctor too. Um, so good. But yeah, I'm going down a whole bunch of health rabbit holes and stuff like that too. Um, I was, so. Okay, I was just going to ask you about that. So that was like my last my last question here it was going to be, what are you? You know, you're you're someone that stays in shape. Like if someone sees you and meets Corey, be like, dang, he's good, he's good looking. He stays in shape. Like he he puts himself together. What do you do to stay in shape, keep healthy, and kind of stay on top of your game here? Yeah, that's a nice compliment, man. I appreciate it. Um, uh, honestly, I just try and eat. Uh, as much meat as possible like i think it's a a version of, of a carnivore diet i'd still mm -hmm. do get some carbs in um and mostly i mean i don't know i work out every single day five six days a week i do a lot mm -hmm. of muay thai actually um and so you know four or five days a week I'm, I'm doing muay thai which is the craziest workout um i think on earth it's just honestly a wild especially like you know, there's, I'm, I'm right now I'm, you know, training deep in the jungles of Tulum with my, with my senseis at <laughs> Tulum Muay Thai. And, uh, like they're like legitimate fighters. Um, you know, I go, I, I sign up for the gym just to like, for like a fitness exercise class type of thing. And then I quickly realized like, Oh, everybody's in here, like actually training for a fight coming up like next week or next month or whatever. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, I mean, in terms of like the nutrition side, um, yeah, just trying to eat as much food, as much meat, as much food, honestly, in general as well. Like I try to eat like a lot of food, um, mm. but yeah, just trying to eat a lot of meat, get good sleep, um, you know, get outside, get, uh, get lots of sun as well. Um, but I think just being active every single day is, is important. Um, but I mean, back to this whole Tulum Muay Thai thing, I honestly just got to give them a mm. shout out. They're absolute animals. Um, and it's nice. I was telling you this off stream too, but you know, you played hockey and eventually you had to retire and, you know, I, I didn't get even 10% of the way, um, into professional hockey as, as you did, but uh, there was still sad days when I had to hang them up. And mm -hmm. it's, it's nice to like be a part of something where, you know, you have, you know, kind of like a locker room type of setting. Um, you have, you have your little team, you have your little community, um, and you're able to hold each other accountable and, you know, it's like a huge discipline thing. Uh, it's ton tons of amount of respect for it as well. Cause like, you know, we'll spar and like, you're like really punching people in the face <laughs> yeah. you know, and getting punched. No I, I had a black eye until last week, you know, I might still have it actually. I don't know. Uh, oh yeah. Anyways. You can see a tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Maybe a tiny bit, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's nice um, being, you know, a part of that. And I think that that's, that's huge. And uh, I mean, I think I'm in the best shape of my life just from, from going to this gym. So shout out to those guys, but, I mean, like, like we were saying off air as well. I mean, I guess just to wrap up, like, you know, just like I was telling the story, but when you have to hang up your skates and, you know, you stop playing on a team for hockey, like this whole thing that I'm trying to do with Aubders official and like, you know, team Bitcoin merchandise is really just trying to provide like super high quality merchandise for team Bitcoin. And again, like, you know, I think that it is great that just like on your hockey team, you are surrounded by a bunch of people who can hold you accountable. You know what I mean? Who can um, essentially just like, you know, we are all fighting for the same thing. You know, we're all trying to be sovereign individuals and separate money from state. And it's amazing that, like I was saying, you can go to a Bitcoin conference and just feel totally open and free to like talk to anybody about anything and these people are all on your team, you know what I mean? And uh, even if you don't just don't agree with everything that they say, or you may not like every single person, like we are all, we are all on the same team. And um, if we are successful in what we're trying to do, I think the world is going to be immeasurably a better place. And I think that's just, I guess, at the end of the, at the end of the day, the, what we're all trying to do. Right. So, so beautiful, man. Well, I appreciate you so much, brother. Uh, appreciate our friendship. I appreciate you coming on here today. Where where can people find you? Any last words of wisdom, advice, uh, and where can people find you? 
Yeah, dude. No, thank you so much for having me on. Um, you can go to hodlersofficial.com. So H-O-D-L-E-R-S official.com. Um, hottest Bitcoin merchandise in the game. Team Bitcoin yep. merchandise. You got the jerseys right there and right here as well. And you can find me uh, shitposting on Twitter as well a little bit. <laughs> uh, Hodlers O uh, on Twitter. Uh, those are probably the best ways to find me. I'm on Oster as well. Hodlers official on Oster. So I'm trying to grow that a little bit as well. Um, nice. But but yeah, man. And honestly, like you've had some amazing conversations on your podcast. So shout out to you, man. Um, like, I really oh, like the, the, one, the one with Shane, like even going way back, there was, um, yeah, thanks, dude. I can't remember. I can't remember his name. You would be able to, you would be able to remember his name, but it was on like homeschooling. Yeah. yeah I've got the list right here, actually. Um, Daniel Prince. Yeah, Daniel Prince. exactly. He's yeah, an amazing that, guy. Yes. That was a great one, man. I really like that yeah. talk a lot. And I mean, you know, I'm getting to the age where I got to start thinking about having kids as well. So these are, these are great things to download into my brain and um, yeah, shout out to yep. you, man. I know you've been working really hard and having a lot of great Thank guests you. on. You're super, super nice guy. Super uh, easy to talk to as well. And um, yeah, I look forward to, to seeing you in person at the next Bitcoin conference. No, same dude. I appreciate it. I owe you, uh, you know, I don't know, Jack and Coke. I owe you something next conference for saying those nice kind words right there. <laughs> no sweat. I owe you lunch. I owe you a steak. It's free, so, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. Um, awesome. Yeah. I'll link to that stuff there. Uh, so that way everyone can go check your stuff out. Yeah. Incredible quality stuff. So go check it out and uh, it's worth a great, great Christmas gift. You know, it's a great, uh, whatever, New Year's gift, birthday gift. And uh, they're, they're awesome. Awesome quality. So appreciate you, man. Thank you. Proof of work, baby. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode with uh, another playable character. Corey is, is, like I said, one of the nicest people, as you can tell, one of the nicest people out there. He has just an incredible life for detail, just incredibly smart, incredibly bright for being so young. His stories, uh, talking about how he was orange-pilled through the Canadian trucker uh, convoy, the trucker convoy uh, that was led by BJ Dichter, who uh, I have the the honor to uh, share the political Bitcoin hour and, and co-found there, co-host that with him. Uh, that's, that's someone that I know we all look up to. Corey does as well, obviously, and kind of touches on that here today. Just an incredible person, uh, a young and up and coming entrepreneur and real influencer in the Bitcoin space, even though I hate the word influencer, so fiat, uh, but that's what Corey is and has that personality, has the ethos within him and is just really, literally one of the nicest people in the entire space and an honor to meet him uh, a year ago, an honor to know him and now call him a good friend. Thank you for watching this today. Please share this out because the algorithm hates truth question everything in boldness, even the existence of God himself. Trust but verify. And this is not financial advice, it is freedom advice. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.